Well, we've been stuck here for the best part of a week in very high winds and driving rain and today is no better. So it looks like we've got another few days stuck here in Liverpool waiting for the weather to change. from here all the way across and down in here. So I've got the essential information for today and tomorrow or part of tomorrow. I've got the tides for Liverpool and the tides for Conway. We've got the weather forecast downloaded. It was one from quite a few hours ago and we're going to wait for a midday update and we're going to hope that this has dropped and this is more sort of what we're going to get. We made a small diversion to check that our yacht club's mooring balls were okay. Then it was past the perch and over the drying sands toward the wind farms. some nice sailing but when going through the wind farm we were head to wind so down came the sails. Even though it's dark I have to tell you they're still pretty impressive things yeah. against the skyline. As night fell the winds rose to force 6 then force 7 as we passed the great arm in darkness. We reached Conway after midnight. So Bev, why are we in Conway? Because we don't know anyone. <laughs> What do you mean you don't know anyone? I know at least five book boats you've talked to. <laughs> okay, we know hardly anyone compared to Liverpool. Liverpool, we know everybody, and they all stop by the boat to have a chat with us. And I don't mind that, because it's lovely talking to friends, but you don't get any project work done. I've got loads of it to do. So we'll come to Conway, where virtually nobody knows us, or at least doesn't know we're here, which is just as good, and we're going to do our project work in peace, because we've got nothing else to do with ourselves. We're not talking to friends, um, visiting family, having to do shopping, sort out problems. The only problem I've got to sort out is the one under my feet. Yay! So what Beverly's doing now is um, she's taking out all of the little screws and um, she's just screwing a little pilot hole um, so that the screws go a little bit deeper into the pipe. Um, because we just don't want them moving around when we're under passage. So while Beverly's outside um, screwing little holes, I'm going to have fun with an MPPT controller. Oh yay! The first thing I've got to ascertain is exactly what I have. I've got a 10 metres of pre-made up cable uh, supplied to us by Bimble Solar. I have the MPPT controller I have a circuit breaker which needs to go between the battery and the MPPT circuit break, uh, the MPP controller. Bev is currently doing her most loathed job, and that is drilling a hole in Salty Lass. But this is what it looks like so far. But as you can see, we haven't got anything at the back. Hmm, I think we need to sort that out, don't we, Bev? Go away. I have to have a look under, um, <laughs> have a look in the transom for me, please. Yeah, I can see daylight, Beverly. Right, I'm going to pass you to my car. Oh, oh dear, it's come apart. Never mind, it's held up. Right, just stop. <laughs> this piece of wood uh, we bought for a project, which we haven't even started. So I have this section waste. Uh, but it's not going to be waste any longer because it is going to be perfect. 
to be backing on the inside of the transom just to spread the load a bit so that's going to be absolutely perfect for that job Dave's now uh, masticking the uh, the bracket in place and I am going to be on the inside with this one and Bev says the main thing that you need when you're doing um, using mastic is latex gloves yay every time, every time. <sighs> well this is our arch uh, and I have to say it looks pretty good apart from one minor problem well not that Bev minor problem apart from the wind noise was that we had a wobble so we got some rub to experiment with right well seeing as we don't have any uh, tubing uh, what Beverly and I have done is um, we've jewelry rigged some um, of our dog ropes um, in this brace pattern okay Beverly so let's put it to the test a lot more stable so what we're gonna do now is rather than use our dog ropes uh, we have some Dyneema from when we did our lifelines left over so we're going to use that uh, to create some light um, bracing. Well, Bev and I might have come to Conway to try and get a job done but I'm afraid to say distraction follows us <laughs> everywhere. Oh, one of our friends from Liverpool has just come in so we went and helped them with their lines then we saw one of um, our followers so we talked to them for an hour and we'll try honest we will try and get the actual job done <laughs> but we're we like people too much I think uh, we love talking to them and we're easily distracted at any time any place anywhere all right Gainer so what's happening well well this is our frame We've um, got the metal frame, then on top of that we've put on um, some blocks um, so that um, we can actually put the P-clips in. It might have been better for us to have actually put wood on in the end because we needed to screw the screws into something. Um, but we've put used marine flex um, to attach the wood to the um, the perspex so now all it's a case of is actually mounting the thing up and then we've just got to do the solar panels well it's up we haven't got the solar panels on it one um, at a time. but one crisis at a time so Beverly's just putting the grubs the final grub screws in and then what we're gonna do is um, Beverly Beverly had to uh, read her, uh, watch her video on uh, doing Dyneema splices but at least they're there yep. to remind you how to do Dyneema splices what we're going to do is we're going to run some Dyneema from the uh, cross brace here yeah, because to stop this wobble uh, to up here uh, to stop the wobble so that's what we're going to do now well our power station is now installed yeah, we have to, if, you, if you're going to do any boat projects, you have to pull the place apart first, don't you, Bev? Absolutely. I mean, really? look at all this. Today's boat project is wiring the solar panels up to our heist batteries. This is one of them, and the other one is under there. And according to the 12-volt uh, boating group... On Facebook. On Facebook, um, it is better for us to wire one of the... Um, uh, cables to the battery on my side and one of the cables to the battery on Beverly's side so we've chosen to do the red the positives on my side and then the negatives on Beverly's side that way what happens is that the charger will be across both batteries and will make sure that both batteries are charged correctly more importantly, if we're crawling around the boat on our hands and knees in the dark one night, it means reds to port. <laughs> Just 
just a thought. It is just a thought, but there you go. Um, it comes to running cable through your boat. What we have found very handy is this is actually just a, a very thin, narrow bit of plastic. It's a two, two old cable ties tipped together with a bit of yeah whipping tip. <laughs> but we have found this very useful for... Um, doing short distance um, instead of a mousing cord. So let's see, put it into practice, shall we? <sighs> right, and just to give you an idea of how simple and trivial this is to use, um, we pulled it through after the 20th attempt. <laughs> because getting it to go round bends in the dark underneath the floor is, well, I suppose there's a Japanese game for it, really, but... God only knows what it is. And when you um, do get a um, cable through a very awkward spot, never miss the opportunity to run a mousing wire back so that next time you come to um, run another cable, you've at least got a mousing wire um, already in place. So what you're saying here is now that we've got the cable in place, we'll touch this bit of nylon cord to it, pull the cable back a little bit. Yeah. Then tie the nylon cord off and then pull the cable back through again. Yeah, because we've got plenty of cable at this point, whereas... Uh, and I know very well that I'll be wanting to run another cable through that. Um, yeah, like we haven't put the ignition on the cooker or we might put the inverter on the other side. Yeah, if we do put an in, if we put in a new inverter, because at the moment I've got it on the 1K uh, battery, and I think it'd be much better to have it across the batteries like... Um, um, like they said in the 12 volt budding group. Yeah, like they said in the 12 volt budding group. Well, Bev and I are all nice and clean after a hard day on the boat. But so now I think it's time for a uh, glass of wine and some knock. We met our friends in the pub and video advice was freely dispensed. You deserve to get up right up there now because it's interesting. And you're sailing waters other people don't sail. And I think when you do the stuff, the stuff on like the locals, local conditions and stuff, and I think it's really good. Well, we've been um, out. Okay, go for it. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. Okay. It's quite professional with this stuff. I'm going to stop. Beverly and I have been out and we're meeting some new friends. This is a new friend. Julian. Julian. Julian is a new friend. Uh, I've also received a new member of our crew from one of our subscribers. And I'm doing a fly on the wall. And, um, and uh, Tom over there is one of our old friends. Who, who, whose yacht you saved today. <laughs> As we, as we came in at a significant rate towards the quay. 